Hello and welcome to the Ace Destroyer. This video is all about the capture of the bunkers located in Tynecott Cemetery. I hope you'll enjoy. It was the task of the Australian 40th Infantry Battalion to capture and hold the German stronghold at Tynecott. The stronghold was equipped with a handful of bunkers and was a part of the German defence system called Flandernstellung 1. Just before dawn, the Australians attacked. The Germans had created an impressive defence system. The German fire was not only coming from the front, but also from the Bellevue Spur, which was in front of the New Zealand forces to the left. The 40th Infantry Battalion had to attack from shell hole to shell hole. There was also a thick layer of barbed wire with few holes in it, and, if there was a hole, it was covered by a German machine gun. B Company swung to the left, creating a gap in the assault. The gap was closed by A Company under Lieutenant Meager. There was however another gap on the right side. This was closed by Company C under Captain Dumaresk. He rushed forward from the reserve and closed the gap. In the meantime, casualties were mounting. On B Company's flank, the situation wasn't looking good. Captain McPhilly, an Australian rower who competed in the 1912 Olympics, was wounded when he was shouting to his men to follow him. His charge was soon stopped as he was one of the first to get wounded. McPhilly was a military cross recipient for his actions near Maysen. Lieutenant Gatenby was also hit. Lieutenant Boyes was now the only officer of B Company. All companies were slowly progressing. Captain Ruddock of D Company moved his squad via the New Zealanders to the left of Hamburg Redoubt, where he could suppress the German bunkers at the redoubt. This gave other companies a fairer chance to attack. Sergeant Lewis McGee of B Company saw his chance and quickly pushed forward. He pushed through some 50 yards of open ground and frontally attacked a pillbox manned with some MGs. He shot the crew with his revolver. He would later receive the Victoria Cross for that action. Here you can see a good view across McGee's field of attack. Lewis McGee would get killed on the 12th of October 1917, and he is now buried in Tynecott Cemetery. The next point of resistance for the Australians was Hamburg Redoubt itself. Lieutenant Meager rushed forward with his A Company. They took the redoubt along with its four machine guns and they took 25 prisoners. Lieutenant Meager sadly died in this action and he is now buried in Tynecott Cemetery. Lieutenant Meager was the only officer to die in the attack on Tynecott. Meanwhile, D Company had worked forward in sections onto the objective. There was a short hand-to-hand -hand combat near the pillboxes. The objective, being Dab and Dagger Trench, were taken by an assault by A, B and D Company. C Company had arrived on the right of the objective at around the same time. They had moved under heavy fire towards the pillboxes along the winding road. The objective was taken at around a quarter past nine in the morning. The line of pillboxes at Tynecott was probably one of the hardest fights to date of the 40th Infantry Battalion. The attack was a great success. The objective was taken as well as 17 machine guns and around 300 prisoners. Here is what the Germans would have seen on the 4th of October. Just imagine the Australian soldiers running up this slope. The Germans clearly had the advantage. The 40th losses were 20 killed in action. I do not know what the numbers are for the wounded. I can say that they are on the high side. German losses were more than 500, of which 300 captured. Here's a fun fact. According to some sources, the biggest bunker, being the one on which the Cross of Sacrifice is located, wasn't captured by the Australians on the 4th of October. It was only captured on the 9th of October by the British 66th Division 197th Brigade. 
This was the Ace Destroyer. I hope you've enjoyed. Don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment down below. Cheers!